G'day folks, welcome to an all Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update thanks to Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. My name is Chris Nitto. A lot of excitement today in the eastern parts of the continent with a big weather system about to hit the east coast in the next 24 to 48 hours. That will be our main topic of conversation today. We will briefly, firstly though, touch on Tropical Cyclone Alam. Looking at the overview, Severe Tropical Cyclone Lamb Category 3 is located here to the north of Nullumbai. It's going to move in a west-southwest direction uh, over the next little bit and then push in a more southerly direction. Now, we've been saying that for a long time. It hasn't done it. Uh, so, you know, we're only guessing that it's going to do it eventually. And that eventually, the upper-level trough should be strong enough to get it. But the reason it hasn't got it so far is because it's kept pushing northwestwards instead of westwards. Had the little blighter been pushing westwards, I would be intercepting a Category 3 tropical cyclone right now. But because it has shifted a little bit further northwards, uh, there is a lot less chance of it being captured by that upper trough or being captured as dramatically as the computer models were suggesting earlier. Tropical Cyclone Marsha, the big news. Tropical Cyclone Marsha has been named in the 8pm update from the Bureau of Meteorology. Tropical Cyclone Marsha will track in a southwesterly direction towards the Queensland coast. It will hit the coast at this stage, looking at about a 90% probability of it, of it hitting the coast. There's about a 10% chance that it will still remain offshore. Uh, unlikely. We should see the coastal crossing somewhere in the Capricornia or Harvey Bay coastline. As I said, most of the update tonight will be talking about Marsha. However, we do need to cover Tropical Cyclone Lamb briefly to start with. Severe Tropical Cyclone Lamb looking at the latest Bureau of Meteorology track maps, and these have just continuously shifted west and west and west and west and west. Now, at this stage, the cyclone is expected to not move too far between now and 7 a.m. tomorrow, and then probably move even less between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, intensify Category 4. Uh, Millingimby is probably the area that's looking most likely to cop the impacts, but you can see here the continual error margin further to the west suggesting that we could see a track much further west than expected still. Uh, the, however, as the system gets closer to landfall, we'll see that error margin drop. Interestingly, the Bureau, even though we continue to see the uh, track going further and further west, they haven't extended the watch area past Croker Island, so they're obviously not expecting a, uh, a, a Darwin uh, a system going anywhere near Darwin. So this stage, as I mentioned, Milling Gimby is uh, directly in the firing line. You can see here it kept pushing west. Look at this northwestward push. Ah, uh, how annoying is that? So right here, uh, when we first when we first started flying, we really thought we were in with a good chance here at Dean Gove. Uh, we really didn't anticipate this ridge building as strongly as it did. And because it did that, it pushed northwestwards, and you can see we were, we never got within more well, within about 100 kilometres of a uh, go. So and we were really always about 100 kilometres off the pace. Anyway, the system is going to pack a fairly large punch. It is a fairly small system in terms of diameter. Uh, we can see that overall the system itself, the destructive and damaging part of the system is quite small. Gales do extend a fair way out, uh, but the actual system itself, the real strong part of the system, quite small. Interestingly, the intensity remains uh, for a fair, fair while after it crosses the coast here. Still in Category 3, almost 12 hours after crossing the coast. It is fairly flat, marshy, swampy land out here, and so therefore uh, we should see a maintenance of that intensity for a fair way in there. So if we look at the track forecast, or not the track forecast, the previous track here over the past 12 hours, we can see that the system is pretty well now remaining almost stationary here around Cape Wessel. Now Cape Wessel certainly copped a big wind gust or some very strong wind gusts, 170 odd kilometres an hour reported here. It actually got right in the middle of the eye. Uh, we had a period there of very, very calm conditions. So you can see progressively the winds got stronger through the day today. They got up to about 30 to 40 knots here and then 40 to 50 knots. And then we went through a period of fairly sharp increase in wind speed. So we're at about 8 a.m. today and through to, uh, you know, through to an extended period here, probably around about uh, 12.46, so about five hours worth of significant damaging and destructive wind gusts, maximum of which was around the 92 knot mark here at, uh, at 11.44 a.m. We had a 92 knot wind gust. Then look at this, look at this beautiful, beautiful look here. Southwest winds followed by very calm winds. So we've gone from about uh, 92 knots to about nine knots. 
And so you can see here the system remaining in the eye for an extended period. It's only just starting to get on the other side of the eye now in the last couple of, uh, last hour or so. And we can see here north north easterly winds, which are completely the opposite to the south south westerly winds that it was receiving just before the eye hit. And so now north north easterly winds at uh, gusting up to about 50 knots. I don't think the back end is going to pack as much of a punch. But what an impressive data set nonetheless. 971.8 uh, was reached, 971.9, 971.2. So around about 971 is the, or 970, you would round it down to, is around about the central pressure of the system as it was over the top of Cape Vessels. The joint typhoon warnings and the track keeps pushing it further and further and further west with each run. And we've got here the JTWC expecting it to cross well west now around Millie Gimby, uh, possibly starting to get uh, towards the Manning Marina as well, which is uh, a bit concerning. So, folks, so that is the expected track here from both agencies. Another, uh, another westward shift here for another 6 to 12 hours, and then this southwest shift into the NT. TFS forecast, fairly simple. CMC forecast is extremely annoying. I don't understand this. It's been doing this now for so many runs. I just don't, uh, I can't fathom for the life of me how one computer model run that many times can get it wrong every single time and get it wrong. Not only get it wrong, but get it wrong so badly with every single run. I just can't fathom it. Anyway, the CMC is absolute rubbish right now. And in fact, the CMC has been rubbish for this system from the word go. It's a Cat 3, but we're, we're struggling to find the actual eye here. There was uh, there was certainly the start of what looked to be an eye over the top when it was over the top of Cape Vessels, but it, uh, it really didn't uh, didn't get going. It still, it still, you know, looks fairly rubbishy for a Category 3. We've seen a lot of Category 3s that look a lot better on satellite than this one does. So on this chart we can see the air, the reason for this slowing down of the system is it's lying in about 5 knots of actual steering current. The 5 knots is trying to steer it, is trying to steer it from south to north or south southwest to north north, sorry, south southeast to north northwest. Uh, and so that's why we've seen this jutting to the north with every, with every update it seems to move just a tiny bit to the north. So, folks, and at the moment here, it's expected to uh, be a category, or expected to intensify to category two or three system in the American scale, which was around about a category three or four system in the Aussie scale. So, fairly decent intensity estimates from both agencies. Fairly good agreement from them both. Still witnessing a little bit of wind shear here, 15 to 20 knots experienced over the top of the system. And that is being offset by reasonable divergence, although not as good as it was. Although the Bureau and the JTWC do expect to see upper level divergence increase on both the northern and semi southern semicircles. Alrighty, so that's where we'll leave that system. I think that's all she wrote for us in Melbourne Boy for that system. So uh, I'm, uh, my, my plans here and OCC's plans are that I will fly back to Town Hall tomorrow. And uh, at about 2 p.m., we will leave Town Hall and head to wherever Tropical Cyclone Marsha is going. And Tropical Cyclone Marsha was named 8 p.m. or 7 p.m. February the 18th. It is expected to intensify slowly, uh, and we should be seeing a Category 2, a very lopsided and ugly looking Category 2, can I just add. It will not be the prettiest thing you've ever seen, but it will still pack a punch. And it's expected to head to the south-southwest here. Expected to make landfall around the Yapoon St. Lawrence area. And not really, you wouldn't even know it's a cyclone if you happen to be north of it. But if you happen to be south of it, uh, you'll definitely know it's there. And so you can see uh, very clearly here the uh, asymmetrical wind field. So you can see that the destructive winds possibly heading out to around about 100, 150 kilometres out, believe it or not, uh, while the... Uh, gale force wind radius is going to be only slightly larger than that. Fairly similar track forecast from the Joint Typhoon Warning Centre, perhaps slightly further east solution here, showing a 45 knot system gusting to 55 knots, so looking at a situation where you've got about 80 to 90 kilometre an hour wind sustained gusting to around about 100 and 110 kilometres an hour. Not overly significant in itself. 
I'm expecting it to get to get down about 980 hectopascals before landfall, which would put it uh, well and truly into Category 2 level. Although, as we all know, that uh, categories are not determined by central presses, but central presses do give us a indication of the wind speeds associated with it. So normally, we would associate a 980 hectopascal system with Category 2 style wind speeds. So what does Marsha look like? Well, not the most impressive cyclone you have, you've ever seen, but uh, you know, beggars can't be choosers. We haven't got one in the Coral Sea now for a while, so uh, you know, we're going to take whatever we can get here. And you can see that was actually looking a lot better earlier today than it does later today. Clear evidence of spiral banding coming through, good outflow particularly to the south, not so good to the north, but uh, we, we are seeing a situation here where Hopefully the system will undergo some more favourable conditions as it progresses in this southwesterly direction. Hopefully not too favourable, of course, to make it into a very destructive system, but favourable enough to be worthy of investigation. The start of the UK net, because the UK net has probably been the most consistent uh, performer in this particular scenario, it is showing an intensification gradual here of the system and a landfall here on the uh, Friday morning. Uh, into the mid morning. So around about 4 a.m. to about 10 a.m. is where landfall occurs around that St. Lawrence to Rockhampton area. Remembering, of course, being a lopsided system, it's all happening south and not too much happening north. Interestingly, while the Bureau expect this to deepen, the GFS forecast model says not on your life. It doesn't want that far of the deepening uh, of this system. It keeps it fairly bleak and it keeps it a little bit further to the east and crossing the southeast Queensland coastline. Looking at the GFS computer forecast models, so Cyclone 13P Lamb overall expected to drift in this south southwesterly direction on the GFS and seeing a very slow if marginal intensification at around that 990 hectopascal system and hitting the coast there around St. Lawrence to Rocky. Humanity is going to back up rapid intensification to the CMC and it's not doing so and so it's expecting a fairly similar track here hitting the coast around St. Lawrence to Rocky. Category 1 tropical cyclone. So if we look at tropical cyclone Marsha now, currently packing a, wh packing a punch here on the southern semicircle. Not much happening to the eastern semicircle, but more importantly, why is it going to head to the west? Well, what we see is a situation where we have an upper level high. Now the upper level high is developing right over or in this area here. So here's our upper level high. Now if you happen to live west of that, or if you happen to be west of that, you're going to get steered towards the southwest and you can just see that there now also over queensland we have an upper level trough so you can't be steered completely to the west what it's going to try to do is steer you southwest south and then southeast and so that's exactly what we're seeing on the forecast tracks we're seeing a track here we're seeing a hitting of the coast and then we're seeing it coming back out to sea obviously that's a simplified track but that's in the general consensus of what we're going to see so it'll be motoring along here as we go into Thursday. Thursday morning we can see the system is going to lie much closer to the Queensland coast. Gale's already developing anywhere south of about uh, Bowen according to the computer modelling. Uh, oh sorry, not Bowen, maybe Proserpine region. Uh, but you can see there's two areas here of really strong winds. The area further to the south, which is associated with a pressure gradient squeeze, and the actual circulation area here to the north, well to the north. Now as we go into Thursday afternoon, we can see the track starts to slow on the Thursday. And so rather than tracking very, very quickly to the southwest, we see a much slower track. We continue to see gales here on the southern side, according to the European. As we go to Thursday night, once again, a continual slow motion towards the southwest uh, with gales to the south of the system. You can see here, if you're north of the system, you are not getting a thing. As we go to Friday morning, we'll see landfall sometime on Friday. Most mo most computer models do landfall here around the Friday morning period. Uh, it's just a matter of when in that morning. So it, the computer model here from the European is suggesting Friday. About 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. is when we're looking at landfall. Uh, the GFS forecast model perhaps slightly earlier than that. And depending on which model run of the GFS of course some of the computer model guidance doesn't even have it hitting the coast as I mentioned there's about a 90-10% so 90% chance it'll hit the coast 10% chance it'll miss to the so with the GFS forecast model we can see here a coastal crossing Thursday 1500 GMT which means Friday 1am Queensland time 
once again, system packs a fair punch to the to the south and not too much to the north. And once again, have a look at the strong winds coming further south into southeast Queensland. We've got strong convergent flow here of 25 to 30 knots. So we're going to see some very, very heavy rain hitting the coastline. So if we take a look at the access computer model here, this is the access regional model. This is the one from the Bureau of Meteorology and looking particularly at what the effects are on the coastline. We can start to see some very heavy rainfall developing here around about 2 p.m. tomorrow on the southeast coast district and into the Harvey Bay coastline, even while the low it remains well offshore. As we go to 5 p.m., we see the low gradually making its way to the coast. We see falls of 50 millimetres plus possible in that three hour period. As we go to 8 p.m. tomorrow, we can see some very heavy falls continuing here along the southeast corner and the uh, Harvey Bay coastline getting into the southern Capricornia. By 11, we can see continuation of those very heavy falls. But once again, the big thing to note here, look, at, look what's happening to the north, almost nothing. 2 a.m., we've got the system basically uh, pretty well hitting land here at 2 a.m. Very heavy rain to the south. 5 a.m. on the Friday, uh, we have the system now on land, still very heavy rain to the south. 8 a.m. on Friday, we continue to see that system just remaining inland of the coast. Huge rainfall totals here in the hinterland regions, possible flooding, 20 to 50 millimetres over uh, three hours. And then the continuation here of a southerly movement at 11, then 2. 2, just be aware here, as we get later on into Friday, we'll see east to northeasterly convergence, and that brings in a lot of warm, moist air from the from the central and northern coral sea and so we actually could see an enhanced period of rainfall here on the southeast coast district uh, possibly in the Harvey Harvey Bay area or just west into the hinterland region 8 p.m. on Friday we can see some very heavy rainfall developing here on the Sunshine Coast hinterland and by 11 p.m. Friday we continue to see this track here to the south so the good news here is that unlike the previous run this time we're looking at more realistic estimates of rainfall the previous run from as I mentioned last night was quite scary uh, and as I was mentioned to you don't get scared by it because it, we're not expecting to see it happen and we're certainly seeing a, a more normal sort of uh, sort of computer model guidance here not that crazy sort of 1500 millimetres over three days being recorded. We're now getting back to a more normal three to 500 millimetres over three days uh, possible in these areas. Now, just remember, every time you see purple here, we're looking at 50 to 100 millimetres over three hours. So we're looking at significant rainfall. As I mentioned, it starts up here and then it starts to drag southwards with the system. If you happen to be north of the system, she's all over. Then sometime through Saturday, it's expected to exit either off the Gold Coast or off the northeast New South Wales coast, and that'll be all she wrote. It might actually intensify once it gets into the Tasman, but it won't impact Queensland any further. Now that we've got fairly good agreement in the track forecast for both uh, Lamb and very good agreement for Marsha, we can see the rainfall totals have come together here. We're expecting very heavy rainfalls over the Arnhem district of the NT, pushing into the VRD in the medium term. Over the Queensland parts, we're expecting very heavy rainfall here, starting from around about the southern Capricornia coastline, heading through the Harvey Bay coastline, uh, through the Sunshine Coast, and then into the Brisbane area and the Gold Coast and northeast New South Wales. So that is the expectation over the next four days. Remembering, of course, that the rainfall begins tomorrow, particularly north of the Sunshine Coast, and then extends further to the south and intensifies on the Friday. Four days after that, we've got some interesting happenings here around the Kimberley. Some of the computer model guidance has tipped Tropical Cyclone Lamb to start making its way west, and we might have something new developing out here in a week's time. So that'll be something we'll need to watch. And over Queensland, fairly benign pattern here, continuation of seasonal showers and storms across the northern and the western peninsula, but overall fairly quiet in the wake of Tropical Cyclone Marsha. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll have another update for subscribers in the morning and for everyone else tomorrow night. That is if we're not chasing. If we are chasing, we won't be having an update tomorrow night. We will be chasing instead. A lot will depend on whether I can get a flight out of here on the morning tomorrow.